Thanks. Right, I'm Jessica Kerr, better known as Jessitron, and I work at honeycomb.io, which is the OG of observability. Uh, a lot of the material in this talk is really credit to, credit to Fred Ebert, our staff SRE. Uh, he sends his regrets. He would love to be here at LFI today, but he couldn't travel, partly because last week he traveled to the company offsite. So this is Fred on the karaoke stage. Two years ago, before Fred started, we did use templates for our incident review. And here's a random one from the archive. Look at it, it's, uh, it's got a title, it's got an incident commander. That link to the Slack chat still works. But uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Well, can't review every incident. And what do we want out of incident review anyway? Is it root cause and to-do items? and a follow-up meeting? <laughs> this is something that Fred got to think about when he started at Honeycomb as our first SRE a couple years ago. Uh, do we want uh, fewer incidents? Well, not really. Fewer outages, yeah. Uh, but he, Fred learned pretty quickly that you don't want your OKRs to basically be, this quarter we're gonna get lucky. So we do want uh, different incidents, and we want different experiences of rhyming incidents, and then we'll harvest those for more interesting learnings in incident review. So our incident review at Honeycomb, it's not about the technical fixes. Those are done separately. It's really about us. It's about who we're becoming as a team. How do we work together, and how do we work with this software that we're caring for? And that's why we want our incident reviews to have a dynamic structure, because we're really trying to pull out the story of what's meaningful in this particular incident. So Fred started out by creating custom diagrams. He'd go through the communications, and then he'd, he'd diagram them very carefully to communicate. Uh, something about this blue box represents a Zoom call where there was a lot of intensive debugging going on, but it kind of got stuck until Doug joined, and then it got better. He made these diagrams in draw.io, and each one took a couple days for him to make. Uh, so they may be communicative, but he can't do very many of them, and he's not gonna ask anybody else to do it. So fast forward to today, and Jelly slurps in all the messages from Slack and makes it a matter of hours instead of days to construct a custom timeline that's meaningful for this particular incident. Also, there's training. So yeah, lots of us can do this now. This timeline is from our most recent incident review. It was called Circle CI Secret Swap. Anybody else have one of these last month? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this started at like 9 p.m. Central on January 4th uh, when we got an email from Circle CI saying, oh yeah, about those secrets you entrusted to us. You might wanna rotate all of them. Uh, so 9 p.m. Uh, people start an incident and they get into the channels and they're like, First, first we made sure that all of our customer data was safe. Uh, and then, so we're, we're asking like, okay, what do we need to do tonight? Tonight we need to revoke all the important keys. And then we're gonna go to bed. And then tomorrow, we're gonna get up and we're gonna make deploys work again. Um, and then there's this long tail that stretches out for almost a week of all of our open source projects and all of the keys that they need. Um, and that's fine. Zooming out, we can add the review to this timeline because a week or so later, uh, Jam, who's on our security team, uh, asked for a review of this incident. And they could have done it themselves, but they were super involved in this review. So uh, Nathan from the SRE team volunteered. And he was confident he could do it because he's done a, a small one before and he's been through the training. So Nathan spent the le next couple days, uh, they went through the messages in Slack a couple times to pull out sort of vague themes about what's going on. And then the important part, uh, they interviewed five different people who were involved in the incident to get different perspectives. And this really crystallized the themes that Nathan wanted to talk about in the incident review. Here's Nathan. Our main objective here is to learn and get a better understanding of what, a, of what happened and what it can mean. So this is one of our uh, incident, incident review ground rules that we read out at the beginning of every incident retrospective meeting. And you can find these online in a blog post. And it's really about, we're here to find meaning. Uh, so Nathan pulled out three themes. The first one was time management. This was about, okay, look how we decided 
what to do tonight and when we should go to sleep and come back in the morning when we're fresh and then what needed to be done urgently and what could drag out, which was pretty interesting. A lot of the dynamic structure of an incident review is what we don't talk about. There are all kinds of things that Nathan found interesting about this incident, but chose not to talk about because too much information is no information. And we're really trying to get the shared stories that we can pass on. So our objective is always to build understanding and a shared understanding among the team. So Nathan involved more of the team uh, at the start of the beginning. Jam talks about what's different about security incidents. With security incidents, it's like you're kind of starting from a blank drawing board. <laughs> and that blank drawing board filled up really fast when we started listing all of the secrets and keys that we needed to revoke and then renew. And we popped open a Google Doc to start the list, and that Google Doc reached 21 pages by the end of this. <laughs> and so that's the next theme. It's about these coordination efforts. 29 people were involved. Um, in this incident. Uh, one thing we did was uh, crack open a temporary vault in one password and start putting secrets in there so that we could safely um, get them to the people who could put them in the right places. And then there was that Google Doc. And people really liked having just one place to like put all the coordination stuff. But every sub team was doing their own thing and their own section of the document. And everybody who like came to it afterward was like, what the heck? Here's Ben. Uh, a section that was checkboxes, and a section that was bullets, and a section that was indented numbers, and a section that was gray text, and a se section that was freeform text, and a section that used highlighting, and a section that used emoji, and a section that used just all of the different styles were there. <laughs> all of them. Uh, so in the incident review, people are like, oh my gosh, can we have a style guide? Please, some manager, make us a style guide. No, no, please don't. Rob points out that no, that a style guide, like some sort of requirement thing that we have to keep read and keep in our heads, that's a barrier to participating in the response to the internet uh, in incident. But we all did agree that it would be great if like the incident coordinator or somebody went back and like put subheadings in so you could see which section was different from the other and who was working on which. Boundaries, people, boundaries, not uniformity. Uh, so that was good, and we'll use these again in future incidents. This is how standards emerge without being enforced. Uh, people know that these tools work here, and they'll use them again. Uh, they liked 1Password, they liked the Google Doc, and they'll add subheadings next time. Uh, and whether they participated in this incident or they heard the story out of the review, this, these patterns will reemerge and be useful in our toolbox. Because this is where our institutional knowledge lives. It's not in the documentation, it's in and between our heads. And the documentation can be a useful coordination point between people or between us and like future us, so we can remember what we did. That's very helpful, but the knowledge is in our heads. And Fred isn't setting up procedures. We're not building up more and better procedures to do this right. Instead, he trusts us to make good decisions with the information we have. On call at Honeycomb is a triage job. Um, you're not supposed to fix everything. You're supposed to know when and to whom to escalate. And that works because people are really happy to jump into Slack and help you. Uh, part of the reason for that is that we hold space for this work. So this is a wider cultural pattern that makes this style of incident review possible. There's space for responding to questions and to what happens. Uh, the remediations are already done by the time we're talking about the incident in the review. So we don't have to focus on action items, no action items, that's in the ground rules. We, we instead can focus on the stories. And we take responsibility for keeping our stuff upgraded and uh, flexible and to get to know each other. We have space for relationships and reflection. The review at all is, is a space for talking about this stuff and thinking together. This space is requisite for resilience. So this, we need a lot of it in this incident and that gets us to- Yes, okay, this is where I get to talk about the sprawl. Okay, can we talk about the sprawl? I want to talk about the sprawl. <laughs> There were so many secrets. I mean, even after we got all of our production stuff working again, we have like 30-something 
open source projects that we published to six different ecosystems, and that was a lot. And now it could have been a lot worse. Here's Rob and Jamie. That we had spent a significant amount of like engineering time to make all of our projects and release levers sort of look and feel the same made this a lot easier. That's true. And we did a lot of that hard work a year ago of making sure the different projects were using context instead of environment variables. So this was a few stragglers as opposed to every single repo. So context is a circle CI concept and you're supposed to put your secrets in the context now. You're not supposed to put them in environment variables every, every anymore. And a year ago, the telemetry team spent some time keeping our, our build processes up to date and doing that. And that made this incident response a lot more palatable. Also, 1Password. It was just November that we moved to 1Password. And if we hadn't done that, every would have been, everyone would have been super, super frustrated with LastPass, as you do. Um, so those, these kinds of uh, keeping our tools and our own systems up to date really help. And we can do that because at Honeycomb, Fred has a strong belief that if something needs done, someone's just going to do it. I mean, not everything is up to date, but when I encounter a secret that needs moved into a context or a test that I need to upgrade to the latest framework or a library that I need to bump the version of and make sure everything works, I just do it. I do not put a ticket in the backlog where weeks later, I'm gonna have to justify this after I don't care anymore, why we should do this tiny thing instead of the next feature request. Don't take a technical task and turn it into a social project by forcing me to put it into the backlog. Okay, we just do the thing. Now that's if it's gonna take an hour or two. If it's gonna take a day, we probably do put it in a sauna and we'll talk about it with our team in stand-up and then we'll just do it. Now, if it's like a whole architectural change, if we need to modularize something and put a cache in front of it so we can reduce load on the database, then we're gonna do the social project of getting that on the roadmap. But all of these technical remediations get done because people have the space to do it. And the review itself. Sometimes the most challenging part of running incident review is scheduling the meeting. Now that's gotten easier at Honeycomb since we now have oncology. Oncology is not, it's not like the cancer thing. It's on call a G. Fred named it. Uh, oncology is a weekly meeting. It's on every engineer's calendar. It's always optional. And typically we have a weekly theme that is something that's gonna make people feel more comfortable being on call. There's technical stuff, there's uh, how we comport ourselves stuff. Um, and other weeks there's no theme and it's just office hours and we get to jam with Fred. <laughs> Either way, there's space on the calendar for the review. Yeah, have a great day, everyone. That concludes this incident review with the three themes. And that concludes this review of this incident review. At Honeycomb, we don't use incident response templates. We want a dynamic structure so that we can pull out the interesting stories from each incident. And those build into our shared understanding because that's where our knowledge lives. It's not in procedures or templates. And we can do this because we hold space for the work that needs to be done. We don't have to fight for it. Now, if you try this at home, maybe by subversively just not filling out all the fields in the template, but like, unlike this one, put some fields, put like a meaningful story in that people can actually take away from and enjoy reading. I recommend uh, GIFs. If you put GIFs in your emails, people start reading them. Um, but whatever you do, whatever you do, uh, Try it out on an incident that's not super stressful. Like this one, Circle CI Secret Swap, total easy mode. Cause who do you blame? Pfft. Circle CI, yeah. Who's caring about the cause? Pfft. Circle CI, yeah. There's no like feelings um, between us. We're all just helping. So that was easy. The hard part of incident review is dealing with the feelings. Uh, so when you have an emotionally charged incident, make sure people are comfortable with the process you use for that review before it's an exciting one. Whatever you do, you're going to get better. If you recognize that the point of incident response and review, it's not to have no incidents, it's not MTTR, it's about us. It's about who we become and what we're capable of in the future as an organization, 
of people and software and the relations between us. I would like to thank Fred and also Nathan and Jam for their help with this talk. Um, and Fred is available in the conference Slack to answer questions. The end. <laughs>